So we've been running the Successful Mentalist podcast for literally what? Well over a year now. And I remember one of our first episodes, Aiden, was talking about who we are, what we do, and why we've set up these Successful Mentalists, blah, 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 blah. And I'll be honest, a lot has changed since then, which is why in today's episode, we thought it's going to be so much better for you guys to actually understand who we are now, why we're doing this, what we are, who we are, all of that stuff, and why I'm currently here sat like a soggy guy because it was raining and I hate to take my washing in. So, with that said, I'm going to pass you over to Aiden, and he's going to, yeah, fill us all in about us and our lives in general. So, strapping guys. I mean, that was a bit of a philosophical intro, wasn't it? I mean, let's be fair. Uh, and for anybody that doesn't put their washing outside, has no idea what Ashley's... Uh... Ashley's got going on. Anyway, uh, yeah, so as Ashley said, we've been running this for well over 18 months, not just a year. You're you're hooked on the one-year anniversary. I'm hooked on the fact that it's been over 18 months, which is ridiculous. I mean, heck, what episode is this? Episode 79? There's a lot. Yep, it's a big one. It's a big one. Uh, Not quite as big as episode 80 or episode 81 because they're bigger than 79, but we'll roll and... Continue nonetheless. Anyway, uh, long story short, yeah, this episode is literally uh, no plans, no pointers, no nothing. We just wanted to use this as a great opportunity to touch base and, and say hey, because quite literally, we have had the biggest month in terms of downloads, uh, and it has doubled our typical average. Uh, um, we've got our listeners in 101 countries right now, and, and for you listening, you've probably either been with us for quite a while, or you've probably come up, up to us fairly recently, uh, in which case we wanted to just touch base, say hey, explain who we were, a little bit about our background, so that you kind of understand more of our perspective when it comes down to the content-driven podcasts and then the value-driven podcast that we're sharing, but also because... At the end of the day, we're trying to build a community, and one way to build a community is to just get to know each other. It's kind of the first rule, isn't it? It's like the f- first rule of uh, any networking event. You've got to say who you are, what you do. So this is kind of our attempt at saying who we are and what we do. Uh, All right, then. All right. Aiden, who are you? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of walked straight into that one, didn't I? Uh, yes, you did. Oh, that's embarrassing. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, my name's Aiden. You know that. Ashley introed me. And uh, I do stuff. Job done. Simple as that. Wow. wow. <laughs> Everyone's here expecting a nice philosophical answer. They're like, oh my gosh, this is finally, finally the time to find out who the people behind the podcast are. Who are these people? I've been listening for the past 40 episodes. I've been meaning to listen to some back and I, I really, oh my gosh, this is it. I get to find out into their lives, what they do, their passions, what motivates them, what drives them. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aiden. I do stuff. It's true. Great answer. Great answer. What stuff do you do there? Oh, dear. So there's all sorts of stuff going on in my world right now. I mean, let's take the obvious performer, um, magician slash mentalist. I Again, my origin sort of story in, inside of the whole world of magic as such um, started out just over sort of 10, 10, 11 years ago um, as a uh, both a hypnotist uh, and a pickpocket. They were the kind of things that I was really interested in, kind of then blended that uh, into an interest of magic and learned magic. And from there, learned psychology. And then the psychology and the magic turned into mentalism, as as is quite common for a lot of performers, a lot of entertainers. Um and this is kind of where we are now. I'm actually on the cusp of trying to go back a bit from mentalism and actually reconnect with magic in, in my performances in a in a in a new way that isn't just pick a card. It was is this your card? Is it at the top of the deck? Well, hey, magic. It's actually meaning something. It actually does something a bit more visceral than oh yeah, cool, well done. That was that was a good trick. Um, that's not the reaction I'm after anymore. I've, I've given up with that. We I think we all have to go through that as a phase at some point. I think we all have to do that. We have to chase a reaction because then at least we know what works for us, what doesn't work, and then we could start to play and innovate. But that's kind of it in the performance world. Again, my my methods are mostly mostly psychological. I'm sure we'll talk, talk about that in a little while. But um, that's kind of magic for me. It's something huge. I'm a huge lover of the the stage world, and that's something that I'm definitely pushing more towards. Again, your private event, weddings here, there, and everywhere. Not huge on them. Um, lots and lots and having a busy calendar of lots of different events that's not kind of my thing uh, i've got time for that i just can't really see myself doing that for the long haul uh but again outside of that 
help entrepreneurs and other uh, entertainers and, and other coaches actually grow and scale their business. That's kind of my my passion. That's the stuff, main stuff that I'm actually rolling on a professional sense. That makes sense? Yeah, nice little overview from there. And I'm sure we'll dig a little bit deeper into that in a second. But one thing you didn't touch on was some people be like, well, why has Ashley been calling you the mindset guru for the past few months? <laughs> hey, the mindset guru. So what? Because he does tricks, but not tricks and teaches entrepreneurs. <gasps> You're not even touched and thought to thought to address address the nickname, address the status. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I need a little badge or something. Can we get that first TSM official in person convention? We get little badges. <laughs> you, you can have mindset guru, and I'll get weird guy. No, you get you know like you get those typical um, like those two red strip my name is badges. We'll get you one of them. <laughs> we'll get my name is, and we'll get this blonde bronze plaqued mindset guru kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean I'll be honest, I don't really know where the mindset guru thing has come in. Again, my my huge passion is uh, in, in understanding people, human psychology, human behaviour, and actually being able to help people um, on a journey to living a, a more intentional life. So for me, I've got a, a, a really massive transformative purpose, which um, I kind of live each day uh, of my life by, and that's quite simply to give life back to a world that is just existing. Uh, and what do we mean by that? Well, I believe that a huge majority of the world is still asleep right now. If you want to look at uh, a, a, a slightly philosophical route of putting it uh, and and it's in the sense of we follow the same life plan we have we basically have our lives mapped out and we just live it it will be at slightly different versions of it but but the core life is the same like we for the most part and again this is happens all around the world like we go to school we go through the education system of what roughly 18 20 years we then move out of that and go into university of some kind for a couple of years from there we then get encouraged to move into a job for 40 to 60 years so that we can then retire and enjoy the last 20 and studies out there suggest that actually those that managed to reach retirement age like they did an average study on this that and the other uh, of how long into that 20 years of lifespan they had and and most people actually they found uh, only managed to survive for three of it so that's quite a morbid thing and for me i'm not up for spending 60 70 years however long uh 80 years however long to try and live for that last bit i'd rather just live all the way through and, and help other people do it as well by where possible breaking out of the mold and, and doing what you feel is more relevant for you actually doing what you want to do and what you enjoy and again a lot of that is a, is, is a big mindset shift and that's something that I, I particularly work with i work with a lot of people on a mindset level to to make some really simple yet profound changes to help you actually achieve things that you um you didn't even think could have been possible i think that's that's a really interesting um sort of angle and it's kind of blown up from there I, I think a lot of a lot of our challenges are vastly psychological in nature and when we can actually get over those those mental challenges uh, a lot of things kind of open up yeah you touched on something i think a lot of people especially in our trade kind of face and and it is getting trapped in uh in the day-to-day -day runnings and they kind of come to magic to kind of break out of it don't they because they get trapped in that job I, I remember one of the sayings like oh i don't i don't live to work I, I work to live and it's like yeah i completely disagree with that statement instead it should just be i live i live and have fun and and, and that's what you're kind of like encouraging the world to do and just actually wake up from the trap and everything that they're kind of stuck in which is is fantastic work and then that links so nicely into helping entrepreneurs that want to change the world and spread this impact as well which is great and some of the other things you've got two other things which again too modest <laughs> First of all, the way you're way you're saying you're transitioning back from magic over to mentalism, or sorry, <laughs> the way you're transitioning from like magic uh, to back to your past in the way you're transitioning, Aiden, from I might not be transitioning at this <laughs> rate, ladies and gents. Back to magic to a, whatever the hell it is. I'll be honest, I've seen your yeah, entertainment yeah. career go from oh, I butchered that. You could, you could never tell that I actually do speaking as a living, speak <laughs> on stage and at events as a living. Wow, yeah, never, never, really <laughs> um, never know. And anyway, you're like you're kind of drumming back on the tricks itself to just go down the route. And this is where we cross over. We're very opposite ends of the mm. spectrum in performing, which I'll touch on in a minute. But 
you're taking a trick and going, actually, let's just get rid of the trick. How can I do it for real? And do it for real using genuine psychology. And like, on top of that, one of the other things you haven't mentioned is like the people that you've been training with, like one-on-one in groups and connecting with as well. Can you tell us more about both of those aspects? Uh, yeah, hundred uh, percent. I think what's really important at the end of the day, it's like the question I'm always asking myself when it comes down to a performance, um, any form of performance, really uh, the number one question. And I highly recommend that you take it, drag and drop it straight away. Uh, it's quite simply, what is my vision of good magic? And for me, good magic feels real, not just from an audience's perspective, but from your perspective. Like I'm a, I'm a, a Marvel nerd and uh, I love watching the superhero movies and all of that stuff. And when you can see people like, uh, I mean, Magneto walk along the street and he could just move a, a like a car with a, a little gentle wave of his hand, like that feels magical from, from, from actually seeing it from his perspective and also from, like another perspective too, like the the people around him. And I always think about that kind of concept in magic. And I'm not saying that good magic is being able to move stuff across the table. What I'm saying here is that magic should look and feel real for everybody, including the performer. And for me, the easiest decision to think like, okay, how do I start making it feel more real for me rather than just doing some card tricks or false shuffles or or sleight of hand or or billet peaks or anything like that what was the easiest way to start making it feel more real well for me it was just to try and do it for real and anybody that's followed my work for any significant amount of time you'll be fully aware of um, my approach to the witch hand or the the coin in hand plot are usually done with verbal linguistics or logic puzzles or magnet detectors or any other fancy method like I got rid of all of that in favor of just talking psychology and actually being able to understand uh, people's behavior, actually being able to understand the way people think and then use that and blend that into routines. And that's something that I'm heavily exploring right now to the point that I'm seeing just how far I can push it and see if I can write entire shows that are just pure psychology that look like magic tricks. Whereas a lot of performers out there do uh, uh, like a, they force a card and pretend they're reading body language I'm doing free choice of card, real body language, and making it look like it was a card trick. That's kind of my my angle. It's kind of a twisted logic, and it's just fun um, in that sense. Um, so hopefully that covers that point to an extent. Like, what is your vision of good magic? And and just try and do that. Is there any way? And I'm not saying you have to go and become a psychological master to be able to understand that. Like, it's not hard to do, truth be told. Uh, heck, I taught you my witch hand routine in, what, 30, 40 minutes? And that evening, you was already performing it. Like... psychology is really easy when you understand it but you don't have to take psychology as the route you can like if you want to really be able to try and move stuff with your mind across a table and stuff what would that look like and what would that feel like for you can you now create a method or, or find the right method that's going to allow that to look like it's the case um but that's trick talk that's a conversation that we could we could look at later or another time um but outside of that yeah again a huge thing for me is um uh, in the world of peak performance so that's kind of my um my genre if you like i, I work with and, and train with some of the most incredible people in the world I'm, I'm honored to actually be able to have these people as as friends and as coaches and as mentors at this point and and for anybody who's not familiar with peak performance it's quite simply the concept of being able to operate at your best and so i've trained with people like stephen kotler the the new york times best multiple best uh, selling author um i've worked with uh had coaching direct coaching from scott barry kaufman uh alongside Stephen at the Flow Research Collective, their training facility. I've worked with the Mind Valley audience and Vishen Lakiani over on the Mind Valley platform um, and actually trained there. It's something that personal growth, personal development, I am huge on. And uh, as, <laughs> sorry, my dog has literally just uh, popped his head over the window. That was quite, uh, he's outside. He's just popped his head over, which was quite amusing. <laughs> it made me laugh because I wasn't expecting it. Um, but yeah, so it's like I'm training with incredible people uh, because of that point of like, I want to be the best that I can be so that others can also benefit from that. And I can help others do the same. And, and I don't know whether there was any key point that you actually wanted covered on that, Ashley. I've got no idea, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just important to do nonetheless. It's to really just let us into your mind and find out kind of like, first of all, 
what you're doing so that we actually yeah. know who is this guy behind the microphone? What does he actually do? And then, then there's reasons why, the deeper reasons inside your brain of why you want to do that. And it, and it really does, from what I've seen, is it's learning how to be the better you so you can live the life that you want and live that life to help others and just create a so much better place and a newfound society for everyone. And that links into some of the motivation of why like we set up TSM as well, because we've got that both in a passion and very similar things linked of people getting caught up and we know there's a lot of entertainers that need help and struggle and we was like we never had that help when we were younger and that also led to the motivation behind as you say an 18 month trek an 18 month <laughs> trek of a podcast and other things along the side well exactly that it goes back to that neil donald walsh quote that i've said on probably uh what we're episode 79 now i've probably said it on 70 of the episodes um it feels like that sometimes um but it's like, like a Neil Donald Walsh quote, um, words to the effect of your life is not about you. It's about the, the impact or, or the impact upon every other life that you touch. Uh, and that for me, it, the, the, that concept really struck me as like, yeah, damn, it's like, I can, I can, I can do this amazing thing. I can become the most amazing person, but what's the point? What's the real point behind that? What you can have all the money in the world or the fame or the, the glory or the, status etc etc but why do people chase fame people chase fame because it puts them on a pedestal because then they've got a position where they can make an impact positive or negative and then you look at any extreme the people in the best of the best of the world they're the ones that are actually out there trying to to make a change and you look at the worst of the worst of the world and they're still trying to make an impact on a wider scale albeit a negative scale so Again, your life isn't about you. It's about the impact and, and the lives of others that you actually touch. That is something that I live my life by. I know that actually when we started talking and, and again, it's part of the process of TSM, as you said, like we want to help other entertainers because uh, for the most part, we didn't have that support. Uh, but more importantly, we're living in a really interesting time right now where enter like being an entertainer has never been easier. Yet at the same time, it is incredibly hard to navigate the BS that's out there stopping you. Um, and for most people, that's pretty much everywhere they look. Like uh, we spoke to a few people like, sure, Learn to Thrive, our, our elite coaching program is designed to help people come up with the most advanced business plan in the entertainment industry. That's part of the process. However, the point of the course is not to write you a business plan. Like that's just a simple byproduct that you can t tick off. It's a tick box exercise, if you like. That's the only reason it's included. What's actually more important is to streamline the focus, doing the right stuff and actually making an impact and, and living that life as an entertainer. But again, other conversations for another time. But we've spoken about me, Ashley, at this point. We've, we've said a lot about me. Tell us about you. We're, we're God knows how long into this episode now. We haven't even we haven't even said hello to you. <laughs> so t talk to <laughs> oh, me. I was curious. I thought this was a good chat. It's a good chat. <laughs> Hopefully people understand you a bit better now rather than that guy who just kind of sits there in an elf shirt. There's another little thing you oh, didn't gosh, know about yeah. him. Sometimes he records half, half the podcasts have been recorded. He's been in an elf shirt. Not even Christmas. Just sits there in an elf shirt because he can. Hashtag what do you festive. want to know about me? <laughs> do you have an elf shirt? Uh, no. Well, well, that's me then. Fun fact, ladies and gentlemen, Ashley has recorded 100% of the podcasts without his elf shirt. Um, partly because uh, it doesn't own one, which is terrible. But no, tell us. Uh, performing. Start with performing. Easiest way. Tell us about your history and your origin story and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I was struck by lightning when I was younger, then I got the superpower and then the gift. No, um, if we, if we go straight into magic and, and that, the thing that a lot of people are interested in here and, and entertainment. Yeah, I, I've loved performing. I, I, I got into this through the route of circus performing. And I always loved like the, the unicycling, the juggling, spinning plates and, and the tightrope walking and doing all the crazy circus stuff. And, and that's why I then fell into kind of like the freak show performing. I used to love like things like blockhead and how people would shove things in their body and walk on glass. Like that fascinated me. And when a kid's learning of that, um, people look at you like that kid is just weird as but you know that fascinated me for a few years my I'm a circus teacher um actually taught me my first ever card trick and then i went down the the magic route card trick stunk because i was uh more introverted in nature than i think than you aiden and uh i, I was much more shy because 
I'm autistic, massively autistic over here. Don't know what I'm doing with conversation <laughs> when I was younger. Definitely had no idea and I would avoid all conversation. So by learning a magic trick, it gave me an opportunity to communicate with people where I could kind of preempt conversation ahead of time and then have that routine in place, i.e. I'd know what people were going to say ahead of to the time because I've done that card trick 500 times in the past. So it stuck. It was a great way of just getting in and chatting to people and not having awkward side routes, which conversations usually go in. So that's why magic stuck for me. I'd done that for a few years um, around about school. Um, and at 15, I got to play on one awesome stage down here uh, the winter gardens down in margate uh fun fact i don't know if i told you this aiden um but at 15 years old that was the same stage i got to perform on like a big 800 seater theater and I'm like that's been played by motorhead the beatles jimmy carr and then uh Obviously not on the same night. I just want to clarify. Yeah. Like, so that was one <laughs> epic show. Lovely. Let's, yeah. let's do and it. And Ashley. Um, <laughs> but like to be able to play on like the same stage as some of those legends, like as a little kid. Wow. And I remember, I remember walking on stage and the stage hands and the event planners came up to me because I was so shy before. And they was like, they were like, are you okay? Do you need any help? And I remember them whispering saying, why have we booked him? I don't think he's going to do a good job. Like, like, they didn't say it that direct, but that's kind of what they meant because they looked at me like shivering and shaking. But as soon as I was introed, walk on, you just go into autopilot and you just fall into what you love. Maybe I'm schizophrenic and I just change personalities as soon as I walk out in front of the audience. But it just clicks and I just loved it. And it's just so much fun just being there in the moment with people, just seeing the whole room just captivated and happy and having a laugh. And that for me is just so much fun. Uh, so it stuck. I became interested in more mentalism and specifically you're very like the psychic stuff uh, you're the psychological stuff Aiden I couldn't be further away with, from you if I uh, if I could because I'm well over in the psychic realm uh, I became really interested in that because as a weird kid if you're interested in freak show stuff is not too long until you start finding out about people that can speak to the dead and monks that can set fire to trees from a distance and all of this weird stuff like as a kid that's interesting and then i later joined up with like mediumship circles was training with mediumships uh training like with mediums um about mediumship and all of that and, and training with psychics learning how to do tower readings and bone castings and now i adopt that into my act and much like you trying to take your mentalism and make it more real by just being real through psychology I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm trying to take my mentalism and make it more real by just doing like actual real readings, actual real, real psychic work and, and bring that in. So although we're very, very different performers, other ethos is kind of very similar in that aspect. Um, but yeah, that's what I do. Again, close up, always been a busy close up worker, uh, with residencies, um, for really the past few years. Like it's usually once a week, every, every couple of days per week um, and I've just actually recently secured another one but there's one thing I noticed throughout uh, lockdown because I smashed it with virtual shows was doing them all over the world for loads of people one of the first off the bat in the UK which I was happy at so I was out of the starting blocks first and uh, I realized then that it is I had it when I was younger walking out on stage everyone there stage is so much for me so that's more of what i'm transitioning into now and trying to do more stage shows more stage works uh, at private events and uh, and eventually soon to come aiden fingers crossed few stage shows of my own tickets so yeah that's me does that answer your question and fill you into that life that is my performance career yeah i think i think what's really beautiful is that again we are literally either ends of the spectrum uh, in the sense of like I'm, I'm psychology and you're psychic and it's, it's, it is wildly opposite, but you're right. It's like the principles and the ethos and the backbones. And, and if we, if I, I imagine that if we actually did the work ourselves and sat and looked at this, I would imagine that there's the overlaps between the principles that are the way we run, uh, and, and the way we tackle the world of entertainment are probably identical, just interpreted on those two different angles, uh, which I think is particularly interesting. Um, just how something so different can become so universally applicable um which i which i particularly like and I, i'm really looking forward to the days that we actually get to get to put that side by side on stage here on tour which uh fingers crossed is coming soon but yeah i mean you mentioned something there actually 
uh, it's a little thing and I know you've had flack for it before and, and, and I, just, I just want to ask you a question like training with the mediums training with the psychics learning from them becoming a part of that that community how uh, well, two two questions here one what was that experience like uh, and how was that related over to the magic world what was the impact of that and, and b is there any other way outside of magic that you think that this being in these communities has actually helped you either personally or professionally uh yeah now my memory is awful Aiden, so if i don't answer the second question you'll have to be like hey here's so remember there's that. a bonus so tip for you ladies one. and gents so, there you go i've already said remind me what's that first question for you Aiden? first go on, go on, first Aiden. question what what was it like in the medium circles and did the magic industry hate you for it uh yeah, a lot of people were like, "Why? Why have you done that?" But for me, it's it's a fascination. Um, I think any any mentalist, when when you look at this, regardless of your views on psychics and mediumships, to actually go in and just like sit back and just put everything aside and actually just listen and watch and look at what they do behind the scenes is so fascinating. And the most interesting thing for me was most mentalists are probably at this point like what a fool he's the evil one get him out of the community and then others were like oh, i bet in their secret meetings they talk about how they use facebook how they use like their how do they train like cold reading techniques what, what books have they got you know when i was there i genuinely believe they have psychic powers i've, I've not met one psychic um yeah you, you get people out there who actually know they're fraudulent and, and do it and they're like haha i'm using a earpiece that's a different story for a different time the people who i was training with are people who genuinely believe they are psychic um genuinely believe they can speak to the dead and again you have to put your thoughts preconceived ideas away for this part of the conversation now <laughs> and it's very interesting to know how they train and what they do and i wanted to do this for one reason I wanted to incorporate more readings into my act, into my mentalism. I wanted to be get at, better at doing readings. If I wanted to be more of a psychic when performing, if I wanted to give more of a psychic flair, then it's not enough for me to read a book on cold reading. That's what most entertainers do. And most entertainers do readings that are bland and boring and so just analog. So I wanted to go straight to the people who do it well professionally those are experience with years and years and years decades of doing this in the real world and learn from them and one of the greatest tips that i got was just say what you feel like that that is literally what months months of training with them boiled down to because it was just meditation it was just intuition training which was a little bit just i think that was a little bit bs and there was just they were just having fun just doing intuitive games it's like a games night really but, but the whole concept behind it was just so you feel we all understand each other and when you can stop with judgment and you can stop with any other preconceived ideas coming into a situation just look at someone you will get an idea, you will get like a vision or whatever. And, and I genuinely believe that to be true. I, th I think we are intuitive creatures and we can look at people and pick up on how they feel. And that just allowed me to go, well, you know what? I don't need silly stock lines. I don't need a Facebook research someone to do a reading. I can just go out and say what I emotionally feel in a moment. And as a byproduct of that, there's changed my mentalism. It's now one easier because there's less research. <laughs> so much easier. One, less research. Two, if I ever need to do research for a show and I don't get around to it and I've forgotten or whatever, doesn't matter because I don't need it. <laughs> and three, it's just fun and it's those different perspectives that we need to pick up on. And I think this is what's going to lead into your second question, which is... Well, I mean, you've kind of answered it there a little bit, but it's like, what what is the 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 impact on actually learning from these people either personally or professionally outside of magic yeah i mean the answer for this was like yeah i, I know i have touched on it like what it's like but i think joining communities in general whether it's the psychic community or, or any other community like when we was doing the podcast interview with terry tyson he says like in, in essence what i really got from that is if you want to make your magic and mentalism performances so much better You've got to have external things outside. You've got to be doing other things so that you can kind of like bring that in. 
and like have have a different perspective on the world actually have a viewpoint on this actually do this and have a hobby on this and blah 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 blah. just be an experienced all well-rounded interesting person and when you're interested and when you're interesting and you've got various different things going on you'll be like a magnet and people will just be like wow what an amazing person you can bring that into your magic career so if you're just out there, so focus on just, I want to do magic, I want to do magic, I want to do magic, I want to do mentalism, I want to do mentalism, I want to do mentalism. Look what else you want to do. As, as Terry said, cooking and hiking and whitewater rafting and, and gin tasting and seances and, and if you want to be like flying planes and all of that, like this just makes you a well-rounded person. You can bring that into magic and it just elevates everything to do with your magic because you're no longer doing tricks. You're just, Oh, you're able to share experiences, actual stories that mean something. And then the tricks are just like, oh, that's a little cool little bit of icing on the cake. I mean, it, Make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. And it's, it's just a question that I have. I don't think we've ever spoken about. So this is a, an interesting one. Uh, and I, I, th- I think we could both try and dig for some answers on that. Like, what would you say are two or three things that you do or have done outside of magic that have benefited your magic? Like, indirectly, not as in... I'm interested in XYZ, so I talk about it in the in the show. Like, what what are things that we've done completely outside of magic that have right now seemingly no connection to what we do, yet immediately overlap? I mean, I, I'll jump in on the first and, and say that our focus on health is so uh, important for anybody who doesn't know. We are huge advocates on optimized health and, and this kind of stuff. It's a journey that we're going on. Uh, we're really diving deep into to the biohacking movement, actually being able to optimize your internal and external conditions to cre- allow your body to operate in the way you want it to, actually be able to control your yeah. biology by doing that. Now, and, and it's more than just like we're doing it to live to 200. Like, it's actually mm-hmm. become a flipping great hobby for us as well like well, the stuff we're learning and reading is so fun it's interesting and exactly that it's like something that you connected with earlier in terms of like we have to put our put our preconceptions and leave them outside we have to come into this with a growth mindset an open mindset being willing to to learn and explore new things heck all it takes is one look into the world of just diet in and of itself and you've already got uh, you have to have an open mind to even consider keto or to consider paleo or to consider uh, vegan or, or uh, and then on the flip side you have to even have an even more open mind to be able to do it love it and then realize that it's probably not the healthiest thing to do any of those like you have to really understand and that kind of stuff and i would argue that that's one just one thing that crosses over between the both of us that in in more ways than i think we are yet to realize actually helps towards how we show up in magic uh, indirectly i mean obviously directly the healthier you are the better you are as a performer as a business person and all that kind of stuff but outside of that i think it's a, a real mindset that's helped us but is there anything else yeah yeah no 100 percent. and and i think the the most important one is is past jobs past jobs in my career i know it's not like what um i'm doing currently but uh, but i genuinely think a past jobs and what we learned there uh being in the world of like uh corporate work if you want to call it that the standard nine till five helps so much especially in the career i was in like everything i can take from there is has really helped elevate my career i understand how to pe- speak to people on the phone i'm able to optimize that like it would be so easy for me to just set and forget everything I've done in the past with like uh, five or six years in a regular job and put that and forget. But I don't, I call back to everything that I used to do there and bring that into what I do now. And, and that inadvertently helps. So I know that's kind of a, a cop out, but I, I do actually think it's a very relevant point. Like the things we do in the past distinguish who we are today. And we mustn't forget, like no matter how, negative we look on a situation like i thought working as an estate agent and in retail was shit i'll be honest but the experiences and the lessons that we learn we mustn't distinguish them because they're so applicable to everything that i'm doing now and and i will continue to do in in the future 100% 100% I think everybody should do at least some time in retail <laughs> I know we hear about it a lot but I, th- I think everybody needs to go and uh, t- to some degree do a little bit of retail because yeah you first of all you feel sorry for retail workers but more importantly there is so much that you can learn from that situation in that environment in, ter- in terms yeah, of people well, it's, 
it's the understanding people and then you've got the sales skills on top of that and understanding just kind of like how like smooth operations of a business run and then understanding the flaws in the business and what people don't like and how why people get angry at certain reasons like these are all things that we can take and put into our entertainment business to to help why do people get angry in retail oh because there was a problem with refunding a product ah okay how can i put that and how can i implement that into my different kettle of fish but the same lessons and principles can be applied yeah yeah no it totally makes sense actually being able to observe a keen keen eye for observation very very important when it comes down to all of this stuff and the other one i want to add to that is um research into the world of autism that's had a massive impact on magic because if i hadn't have done a lot of research and understand autism the, the way i do now I don't think I'd be able to perform in the way I do. I wouldn't have understood myself as a as an own individual and learn some of like the necessary skills I need to go out and actually communicate and do my job properly, which when you're in the world of entertainment isn't most of it like social communication and talking to people, which are all things which people with autism aren't that great at. So like we can take all these things which are seemingly irrelevant, like hobbies in health learning about autism and having a job like they're completely unrelated but the skill sets and the things we have outside there can it can all be brought back in and like the health meditation as well and another point you invest your time you feel so much less stressed which as an entrepreneur it's very easy to get into that like when things are like high level where like everything's going wrong disaster around you meditation can help so much and then it also feels like it frees up so much of your time so it's like you're regaining time back and yeah there's 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 a lot of benefits from doing other stuff other than just like i'm going to switch on my computer i'm going to do some admin work i'm going to go to a gig and then in the evening i'm gonna i'm gonna watch some tv there's more to life than that i can't actually remember the last i think the last time i watched tv was because my girlfriend put it on but other than that i uh, i don't see the point in it but brutal towards the television industry. Uh, I mean, sorry, I think, you Netflix lovers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, Disney Plus is cranking out some good Marvel things. I know we've said it time and time again on the on the podcast, but yeah, I, I am loving their shows right now. Yeah, they are annoyingly good, which is uh, a shame because I know I don't want to be sitting binging. But that's a conversation for another time. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, here's the thing. We've said, we've said a lot about a lot, we, like in terms of where we are uh, professionally, per, a little bit personal outside of magic as well, which is, which is particularly great. I think one of the nicest ways to sort of round up this episode would probably be more talking um, just about what we're, what we're actually working on right now, as much as we're happy to share, I think, um, just so people can get an understanding of A, what like what has everything so far actually built us to uh, where are we going with tsm where are we going personally professionally um and then yeah that, like just i i don't know what else there is to to uh to share because at, at that point people might actually get an understanding of like some of the stuff that we could end up talking about on the podcast and, and uh maybe not but who knows go for it i mean look we, we we're both sat here as like what we do in terms of work we're which was one of the things we haven't addressed we're also full-time entertainers except we don't see it like that as another mindset which we can get into in another time we we see it as we're just having fun we we do full-time entertainment alongside tsm and aiden obviously runs his other company and we've been able to change again in the past 18 months we've gone from like the way we deal with gigs the way we pick up leads has just been phenomenal we used to struggle with this and now it's like it just works and it clicks into place and as a byproduct we've been able to up both of our fees now to silly amounts where before we'd charge what 190 250 maybe 390 for a gig and now we're going out for like 1200 minimum and it's like we've learned that along this journey through running tsm and with the external influences and that's where we're at now so yeah for you aiden 
what is the next three years going to hold? Because we've gone far in eighteen months. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been a long way. You know what they say? It's like uh, one of the the golden rules behind any form of peak performance is uh, every peak performer knows that the process is crawl, crawl, walk, run. You can't run before you've started walking. You can't walk before you've started crawling. And for us, we've especially the last eighteen months, we've done an awful lot of uh, a lot of all three in different ways. Like we are still crawling now uh, uh, in ways, and we're sprinting at a hundred miles an hour in others. But for for me personally, the the next three years are going to be interesting. Um, writing a book to start with um writing a book uh, for magicians um, i'm not going to say too much about that right now just because um I, I, the outcome i don't know the in fact you know what i will share a little bit about that reason being is that i'd love to have feedback and thoughts <laughs> quite ironic really uh, bear in mind the book itself is on the subject of feedback actually how we can use feedback to improve um our lives and entertainment business overall and we're not just talking here quick feedback form after a gig we're talking like there is a there's so much more to feedback that we we tend to overlook um so i'm writing that i'm I'm doing interviews and training a couple of people in private coaching sessions to actually implement this work and stuff and if you want any help with that um if you head over to instagram search for the feedback loop book um give it a little follow drop me a message and we'll be able to roll from there but yeah i mean look that's one of the projects hopefully next year over the next couple of years getting out on more stages doing more public shows actually stage shows um, obviously we want to get on tour at some point uh, because <laughs> let's be fair the the lessons that we're going to learn on tour are going to be so valuable for for not just us personally but also the, the tsm audience at large so that's kind of another thing um yeah i mean I, it's just there's just a lot going on there's a lot of different things i want to be running some more stuff outside of tsm in the world of business consulting um but yeah ultimately i think it's just pouring fuel on the fire on a system and a process that works uh really well for us right now and, and just use that for for personal professional growth at, at, at its core to be honest 100 percent true that and and for me really the next few years the next three years are going more into that stage work i'm already working on going into more kind of uh, manor houses that that type of stage so like nice gala dinners people turn up champagne reception nice little three course meal and then nice show in the evening and uh, and one of the big things for me is actually working alongside charities to have that that helping hand for them so that's something that i'm teeing up to be able to help a lot of charities through my own performing career because just aligns with what what i want to do especially the charities i'm working with um and it just makes it more rewarding as well it feels like you've actually done a good job like you don't leave leave a gig going oh put a smile on the face you leave a gig going i put a smile on the face and i've helped a bunch of flipping people in the process what a great little feeling that is so that's something that i've got aligned up again the tour is going to be fantastic we both realize that stages are forte where we want to be so we're going to be touring around the uk so guys keep a keep an eye out for that and then finally the other one tsm naturally is going to be running we're still going to be coaching and helping entertainers we want to get them to supercharge their careers like if we can do it and we, we've both kind of glossed over this is a beautiful thing we've glossed over our entertainment careers really and just say hey yeah, we do this. Yeah, we do some gigs. Yeah, it's good fun. It's a bit of a hobby. Like, we actually do it flipping well, but we don't invest that much time into it because we don't need to hustle away. We, we've, we've got it at a place where it doesn't take that much to make our entertainment business work and book the right amount of gigs at the right money to allow the lifestyle we want. And we want to continue helping entertainers actually get into this as well and build them up so that they can thrive in their own personal professional careers whether that be full-time or semi-professional like with a day job like full-time magic and then full-time day job going ahead hand in hand whatever that is we want to be able to build that up and supercharge them so that they can start living the lives they want so tsm is something which we're so passionate about and we will continue to build on year upon year upon year upon year and then the other thing for me is um again because i'm already in corporate entertainment a lot of the time Actually setting up uh, another business to help people with autism and that links into one of the things I'm very passionate about. Like As of this podcast, 88% of people with autism are unemployed and I want to change that and I want to help change the work in... Uh, the change the workplace, change the, the corporate world to be more accommodating to those neurodiverse people. 
help those people who really want to get a job, who just have no idea and keep getting rejection after rejection after rejection after rejection and they're dealing with places that just aren't suited for them and there's that prejudice and that judgment against these people, really help them getting and build up sustainable uh, jobs and careers there whilst working in a workplace that is fit and right for them. So that's that's something that I'm going to be working on. Um, not at the moment. I, I was saying away and I did want to set this up now, but that would have been too many projects yeah. on the go at once and I would have just exploded. My brain would have turned to jelly. But in the next three years, you'll probably hear something about that. So, yeah, that's everything that I, uh, I'm up to. That's good. It's exciting. It's exciting that there's there's a lot there for people to, to, to pick and dissect. And yeah. it feels like we've covered a lot of ground, but at the same time, we've stayed very shallow. We've gone uh, shallow and wide in terms of the, the, the things that we've shared. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot. We could be here for hours, my <laughs> friend, but the people don't want us waffling in their ears. But at the same time, if you want to know a little bit more about us, if you want any advice on anything we've shared, or you're just curious and have a question, we're open people. We're nice guys. You can reach out anytime and drop us a message and we're more than happy to get back to you uh, if you want to probe a little further or need help within your own lives. Exactly that. Exactly that. If you want to just reach out on the, on the socials, you're more than welcome to. Or if you want to shoot us an email, email us info at the successful mentalist dot com. Uh, we'll be able to either ourselves or someone on the team will be able to wing the email to the right person and make sure that we definitely get an answer back to you and get a response back to you um either that or, or just simply come and join us in the community that we're building right now we've mentioned it a few times in this episode but if you head over to the successful mentalist.com forward slash community you'll be able to sign up and join our free totally free community and actually come and get involved in the conversations that we're having over there ask your questions not just to us but to the to the entertainment industry overall like this is what we're doing we're building a powerful community that are t- like growing and learning together for the long haul and we'd love to know about you at the end of the day it's it's one thing for us to be able to sit here and go woohoo we're in 101 countries woohoo we've had the, a, a doubled number of listeners uh, last month but it's it's very different when we actually start knowing who those numbers are it, it puts it puts a, a very different weight to the successes in, in a good way and it it just helps us to serve you better so again by all means come and come and join us inside that community uh make sure that you're you're sharing stuff and actually letting us know who you are I, th- I think that's a real key we want to know at this point exactly because our main mission is to improve the quality of life for all magicians around the globe and if we can see you and see the improvements that you're having or help you to allow you to make those improvements ah oh, it's just an amazing feeling and to be able to see it firsthand is fantastic so with that said i hope you guys have a wonderful fantastic day i hope this has given you an insight into our lives and maybe a little bit of inspiration and one of the biggest things i've taken away from this the same as our conversation with terry the importance of doing stuff outside of magic and mentalism whether it's just a hobby for you or whether you're doing this full time and if you are it's more so important if you're doing this full time you need to be looking at doing other things outside to make you a well-rounded individual I think that's kind of the summary of today's episode, really, from what we've said. Yeah, I mean, 100%. It's definitely it's definitely a recurring theme. We're always interested in other stuff. I think most of our conversations at this point are, uh, are magic-related conversations. Like, let's be fair, when was the last magic-related conversation? I mean, this is a bad example because it was literally yesterday uh, and it was quite a long magic conversation. Uh, but, but around that, uh, like, we rarely end up talking about the ins and outs of 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 magic like our own entertainment businesses and, and that kind of sense because we're always talking about too much other stuff because we're, we're fascinated with all this other stuff and and yeah 100 percent definitely getting some other stuff on on the cards for you is definitely a, a strength that you'll 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 love you'll thank us later true that true that so i hope you guys have enjoyed this episode we'll see you soon and stay up to date with the tsm podcast